just be easy to love the Lord and to do. Allow Him to talk to you. I properly encountered God when I was 10 years old. I was in the classroom. And the Lord Jesus had a personal encounter with me. But when he preached to me, Jesus himself did. And from that time, I have enjoyed living it for him. I have enjoyed walking it for him. The beauty of this life is when the real thing happens. The real thing happens. The beauty begins. I pray for you this weekend. The Lord meet us. And may the real thing happen to us. We are not Christian women.
and then Maria was so sweet. I think Maria was so sweet. For those who followed it like me, it was so sweet. Uh, it ended, I think, that was in 2020 or 2021, around COVID time. I remember some people were running for curfew of the government. Some of us were running for the curfew of Maria Tai. Yeah. So that, that time finds us on TV. Let's just see what next. Thank God that night. And then I ensured that I watched Maria until the day it was ended. It ended with me on the screen. I was there until when it was calling up the benediction. So when Maria ended, another one came called Zora. Oh, Zora was so good, but not as Maria. It was so good. We enjoyed following Zora. And then one day, those people decided to end Zora. It ended very unceremoniously. It ended in a very boring way. In fact, we were thinking like it is just midway, then it ends. I felt bad because it was so boring. Even in Zora, I have a favorite actor. In Maria, I had two favorite actors. I laughed every time I could see them, could feel the movies moving on well. And then after Zora, another one came called Sultan. I think Sultan was the best of them. Sultan was so nice. This is a blind guy, born from a rich family, but because the father wanted a male child. The midwife changed. Another lady had given birth to a baby boy, so the midwife changed the child. And so Sultana gets to be raised up in the gate of suffering, blind, and the boy gets raised in the palace of a very rich father. And Sultana decides to grow. The maid solves problems. Eventually she gets to be married to the same guy. The same guy who should change the hard destiny is the one who marries her. The Lord of I think I love sometimes. I watch Sultan faithfully. <laughs> faithfully. Even if I was preaching like this that it's time for Sultan, I would tell them, brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God is telling me that we stop there. <laughs> and the gospel calls, I want to go out. Follow her. And if something happens by chance that I cannot go back and sit on television and follow sometime, I will follow Vim Sasa on my phone just to catch up. I didn't want any gap. If I had a busy week, I would ensure that on Saturday, they used to do a replay of the entire week on Saturday from my own phone. So I would and so that all my missions on Saturday by four. I'm on TV because I missed the week. And it also ended with me on the screen. I loved it. And for some time, another one came called Becky. I think Becky is running now. Still on TV. To me, Becky is now the most boring one. <laughs> Very boring. I think they did choose characters well. I love these things. I did an entire exegesis of gender on the movie of Sultan, which was published. I did a whole exegesis of that movie. That's why I followed it faithfully. On gender. Now gender is depicted in that movie in Kenya. It's only better. After, after, after Sultan ended, I promised I will never be a slave. I got delivered. I don't know what. Even, even now, I don't know where it's big. I just know it's big. But there is this other one on my that he called Zari. Many people don't know Zari, but I think Zari is the best. Before Zari, there was Selena. Selena was so good. And then when Selena got real pregnant, she said, I'm tired with the movie. I want to go and rest. And because the movie revolves around her, if she says I'm not going to act anymore, it has to end. 
They cannot create another Selena. So Zion came. I think Zion is the best. Now, in all these movies, there is always a favorite actor. One that when you see them being killed, you can even speak in tongues. Rubbish. Please stop intervening. <laughs> If you see them, and some of us, like the ladies, are very good at it. When you see this actor going through some tough time, you even cry. Oh God. God. And sometimes in literature, we know something which the person in the movie does not know. Because that particular person is your favorite actor. In script, we call them characters. There is always a heart character. I know we have all watched movies here, right? And in every movie we have watched, there is always one favorite one which has a character which you are so much attached to. In every movie, there is also a worst character which everybody hates. And when I come out of chaff, what we care what to sue? You hate them. Now, if, if you study literature like me, literature says the worst character to the viewer is the best actor in the set. It is easy to act as a good person. It is difficult to act as a bad person. So if someone acts as a bad person until they are proven bad, until the whole country hates them, that is the best actor. They are brought, they are wrong, where? Ask your neighbor for me. He is your best actor. Okay, okay. T -t -t Turn to the other one. Ask the other one. Who is your best actor? You will be. Bear with me. I have studied literature. I love literature. I read a lot, I watch a lot. My best character in the world is called Washington Denzel. Black America. The movies that guy has acted carry something. Zikona wewe pofibani. Hata kama me act to kupiga watu mungumi. Iso mangumi is going to be popular. It does these things with some uniqueness. Go take time look for Denzel Washington. Movies is that. Now, the Bible is a movie. This one is a movie. So, while watching movies, movies have got different scripts. And in the Bible, we call them scriptures. Now, in every script of the Bible, there are characters. People choose characters. You can choose your favorite character in the Bible. You can say, hey, so and so. So and so is my best. Please ensure, ensure you have a favorite character in the Bible. Don't just live like that. Have someone who is dear to you. Someone close to your heart. Some characters are interesting. You know, you read the Bible, I find some men whose lives are very interesting, full of fun. One of them is Jacob. The Jacob sleeps with Leah and then says he realized it was not right when he woke up in the morning. No matter how. You spend a whole night with someone, and then the following morning you say, Oh, this is not the person, this is a wrong person. But that's stupid, who does that? So, those are characters when I go to heaven, I want to ask them, You acted as fools. But anyway, we are allowed. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is called Paul. Alive. I've wanted to preach like him, talk like him, do things like him, act like him, behave like him, live like him. So one day, I'll tell 
really I'm telling the initial stages of this script. Sina he became Nico Hapa. He became Nico Hapa. Sina, I'll be here to talk to you. So I'll take you through the movie. I just want to pick it from a place so that I feel, speak a few things in the next 10 minutes and we close. One. Allow me pick his story from the time when he's in jail. He died. So I'm seeing him in some old prison cells in Rome, current Italy. And it is cold, it is dark. And in jails, people don't put on warm. People don't take tea. In jail, life is tough. So I'm seeing him in jail. And right in jail, his hands are shackled like this. And then, Paul had sons, spiritual sons. He used to preach. So one day when Paul was preaching in a place called Ephesus, he left Antioch with Barnabas, then they went to Ephesus, and then he established the Ephesian church. So when he established that church, he preached to a young man there called Epaphras. And so when Epaphras got born again, and one of them the Ephesus, he was just hustling. So when he met Paul, Paul preached to him, he got born again in Ephesus, and after that he traveled back home. Now their home was Colossae, or Colossae. So when he went back, he did not keep quiet with the gospel. He started preaching the gospel, telling people Jesus is a savior. He said, the way I saw you people do on Wednesday and last weekend, I was preaching. And I saw Pastor Isaiah. Pastor Isaiah preached. When I grow up, I want to be a short preacher. <laughs> <laughs> because that stamina was the sort of preachers for an hour. You know, some of us begin like we are not going anywhere. Then before you go, you realize we are somewhere. Isaiah starts from somewhere <laughs> and then maintains the somewhere. Church. People are saying this. 
Others claim that this is the right way of doing things. Others say it is this way. So me, I don't know what's right. I'm confused. Being a pastor is hard. I meet people who are very tough at that. I try to tell them this is how things are supposed to be done. They tell me if I like, I die. Sometimes I'm giving up. I don't want to be a pastor anymore. I'm giving up. And then Paul tells him, relax. I will write a letter and tell those people what is expected of them. So you, when you go, just go and read Amen. the letter. Amen. This letter will be their Bible. Remember those days there were no Bibles. So Paul was building what today we call the manuscripts of the Bible. Mm. So the church in Colossae was never established by Paul. He didn't. Number two, the church in Colossae was one of the churches that Paul never visited. He never saw them the way I'm seeing you now. They saw him virtually through his letters. By the time Paul is writing the letter to the church in Colossae, they were with a young man, another son of his called Timothy. At that time, he's also giving Timothy instructions. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 1. Paul tells us that they were with Timothy. And in fact, he also sends the greetings of Timothy. And so this is what I want to walk with us this weekend. Paul tells these people, you are very good in culture. All of you believe that your culture is the right one and everybody should worship in the pattern of your culture. They tell us that it's a mystery people are searching for, people are looking for. This mystery about God, this hidden thing about God, this deep secret about God, people search for it. Then it tells them, it is not in books, it is not in the wisdom of man, it is not in the knowledge of philosophers. It is not even found in the corridors of scholars. He says, the hidden mystery which people are looking for, including culture, is hidden in a man. That man is Christ. Read with me Colossians chapter 1, verse 7, and we pray. I just want to speak a few things. Oh, Jesus. Someone who gets it, just stand up and read. Who knows? Maybe you will read the scripture and become the next apostle in town. Who knows? Just stand up and read. Okay. One. Okay. Thank you. You don't carry up your hand, brother. You just stand. Read. For the Bible says, for the time of John the Baptist. Yes. 
with us. When Christ came to the world, he came to do three things. The coming of Jesus worked out the following three things. Number one, Jesus came to reconcile man back to God. Write these things. As we pray this foundation, write these things. Number one, Jesus came to reconcile man back to God. After the relationship God destroyed at the den, Christ Jesus came to reconcile us back to God. Number two, Jesus came to bring salvation to mankind. Jesus came to bring salvation to mankind. He came so that we can be saved. He came so that in him salvation can be found. Well, the Bible says for salvation is not found in any other name except the name of Jesus. So the second thing which brought him for salvation, he became the sacrificial lamb that acted as a ransom for our forgiveness. Number three, Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God on earth. He came to bring what is in heaven on earth. He came to establish what was hidden from men for the years now to be revealed so that we can understand what heaven wants. So he came to establish the kingdom of God on earth. When I say earth in this context, earth is not things. Earth is me and you. Earth is man. Earth means people. So he came to establish the kingdom of God in me and in you. Now when Christ came and did these three things, Christianity got back. These three things, reconciliation back to God, salvation and establishment of the kingdom of God is what we call Christianity in an action. Christianity has been misused. So write the following things. What Christianity is not. What Christianity is not. Vitu ambapo watu wanadhani ya kwamba ni Ukristo lakini sio Kristo. Number one, Christianity is not a religion. I will talk to you this weekend. Hey, thank you. Tomorrow come and book your seat my pen. My pen and your best. Thank you. Christianity is not a religion. When I'm done with this, we just go home. That's the matter. I'm here. All of this weekend. Number two. Christianity is not a church. Boy, it's not a religion. A religion means a form of worship. Religion is a form of worship. So Christianity is not a form of worship. Because when we talk religions, we have almost four major religions in the world. They are mean, but four are renowned. Number one is Islam as a religion. Number two, Christianity, which people always call religion. But I'm here today to tell you it's not what? A religion. Number three is Buddhism. And finally, number four is Hinduism. These are well-known religions, but there are so many. I'm here to tell you Christianity is not some form of worship or some form of religion. It's not. People think it is, but it's not. It's not a form of worship. Number two, it's not a church. Christianity is not a church. Well, we say, this is our church. We have Christianity. You cannot lock Christianity under a building. You can't. You can't keep it and give it rules. And you know, when we're talking about the church, a church means a set of activities. We will do this, you will do this. Our program looks like it. Christianity is not a program Amen. which is found in a church. So that men come and say, you know, our church is the best. When I am preaching so many churches, there are churches when you are preaching, you are not allowed to move. You preach while standing. In fact, you are even given a static microphone. Then you are not allowed to make noise. So you talk slowly. You tell the brothers and sisters, the Bible is trying to tell us. He's not even telling us. He's trying to tell us. 
You know, God is saying, and sometimes we are invited, you really feel like preaching, but, but you have to. Uh, you have to, because it's, it's a church. This is our church. This is how we do it. In fact, you are not even allowed to sweat when I'm preaching. You're going to ask, what is that handicap you for? No, 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 no. In our church, pastors don't sweat. They talk slowly. In our church, people don't jump. They just break up and dance and jump and scream. No, have the Quran. Oh. Even if you have to sing, even if you have to pray, don't make noise. God hears prayers. Talk to him slowly. He will hear. Christianity in our church, how our church does it. We do come out. We hit people with jump. The high you know those people you are. The church. And yet to tell you Christianity is not a church. If you cannot lock it in a church, we have a church as well. Before you minister, people have to put on a purple robe. And I have to put on yellow. And you know that not that the type of your color determines your arm in the church. You have to this is our cardinal. Mm-hmm. Our cardinal has to put on purple. So when he walks in, we all stand. Mm-hmm. Christianity is not in a door, not in a church. Mm-hmm. You cannot limit it to a cloth someone bought in a tailor and shop and made a robe with it. Christianity is not a church. Not have the red bean last so far. Tito, it is not in the soprano, it is not in the tenor, it is not in the alto, where the soprano singer is sitting in the tenor brother. Christianity is not a church. I'm repeating, Christianity is not. When we talk about denominations that we have, we are talking about six types of worship, which differs from one denomination to another. We have churches like the Bishop Walk said, everybody means that. It's our denomination. We have also denominations where the Archbishop is not even having a bicycle, but he's the Archbishop. He's so respected, he cannot even speak English. Very respected. Very honorable. The arch is the honor, is the final, is a denomination. We also have another denomination that for you to become a believer, they have to remove your teeth. So in that church, people don't eat in Because the mouth is dark. They even call Jehovah Oda because you know, feed him the Lord Jones. <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. So denominations, people come up. I can even wake up today and come up with a denomination and say, from today, this is my thing. Yes. This is where people wash. Yeah. Denominations have come up so many in the new days. If you stop counting churches in Kisum, they are having five names. <laughs> huh? Lamb of God, Samar God. I don't want to mention you because I may mention you in the nomination. I don't want to be tempted. But you see, there are so many. One came in Nairobi called Breast and Honey Ministries International. The pastor was called Pastor Chijoke from the gym. Really, it was done. An exclusive was done for it in media, Hero Radio. But the pastor denomination. And people also go there, they fellowship there. People wake up every day and come up with denomination systems. This is how things are supposed to be done. Denominations. I'm here to tell you Christianity is not. 